Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 16273. Now it's been a while since I've done a build video and that's simply because Microsoft haven't been adding much to the builds over the last few weeks. Uh, and that's simply because we are on the tail end of development of Redstone 3 at this point. So Microsoft are more focused on streamlining and stabilizing the OS rather than adding new features. So in this build video, we're gonna take a look at some of the features that were added in this one and uh, some of the previous ones that I didn't do build videos on. So we're gonna take a look at some improvements in Edge. Um, you know, some more my people stuff and whatever else that I didn't cover in the last few builds. I think from 241 onwards up to 2673 here, as you can see. Uh, so diving straight in, the first noteworthy change that was introduced in this build is a new font called um, that. Barnes Crift. Barnes Christ Crift? Barnes Crift? Barnes Crift. That's what I'm going with. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. Let's ask Bing. Maybe Bing knows. Bing. How do I pronounce Barnscrift? I think that's how you spell it. Pronunciation. How do you pronounce A? That's definitely not what I searched for, Bing. How do you pronounce Kafifi? How do I pronounce... This is not... This is why people use Google. All right, let's try again. How do I pronounce Barnscrift? I don't even think I spelled it right that time. Barnes Crift. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say that this word isn't pronounceable. It's an unpronounceable word. So there you go. Google nor Bing know how to do it. Therefore, this word is not a pronounceable word. And therefore, you can pronounce it however you like. So there it is. That's the font. And if we take a look at it here, let's go to preview. Wow. It looks like that. Now, I don't think it's enabled by default in the OS. It's just in there. So if you want to take advantage, it's an open type font. So... Hooray for that. If you're, if you're a fan of open type fonts, go for it. But there you go. That's that's in this build. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the other improvements that have been added over the last few weeks. If we go into Edge here, you can see that the Edge UI, I believe I haven't seen this, shown this before. I may have somewhere. If I haven't, if or if I have, oh well. You can see here that the title bar is slightly transparent now and, and it's acrylic. You can almost see your wallpaper through it. It's very, very subtle, but it's there, which is pretty nice and if you, if you come into um here you'll see that uh microsoft has removed a bunch of the fluent design stuff here you can no longer do the hover effect which i don't know what they call it i'm just going to call it the hover effect uh, it's not here anymore and it's also missing in some other areas it's no longer in notifications and it's also no longer in the settings app. Well, at least partly. So Microsoft is very inconsistent when it comes to the hover effect right now. So as you can see here in Cortana, it's present and looking pretty great here in this hamburger menu in Cortana. But if we go to the start menu here, it's not there. Very inconsistent. And this isn't the only place where it's inconsistent. If we go into settings, you'll see that it is present here. If I'm hovering over all these icons, you can see the hover effect is taking place. And if I click down on something, I get that sort of nice circle bounce effect. But if we go into an area here, you'll see that it's no longer present in the menu list here. It's not happening. I, it's, it's entirely inconsistent right now. Again, we have another example of it here. If we look in My People, it's there present in the apps area. But if we go down here, it's not there. It's completely missing. Uh, if we go into uh, the notification center here, it's not in notifications. Uh, just trust me on that. I know it's not a notification there, but it's definitely, it doesn't show up in notifications anymore. But if you look very closely, it is there in on the quick actions. It, very subtle, but it is there. Microsoft is just really, really bad at being consistent in its operating system. Uh, so yeah, so fluent design elements are here in some places and not in others for now, which is a shame. But there you go. Uh, that's another change in this build. Uh, let's take a look at what else is new. If we go into Cortana, and I think this, this feature has been backported to um, the creator's update. If I do a search for, I don't know, uh, photos. Oh, well, that's not going to work, is it? If I search for... A website there's now an arrow here and if i click on an arrow if i'll click on the arrow you get a sort of search result without having to actually leave cortana which is very nice and i can click on this and that will open up edge and you know you'll pick up and do what you would normally expect to be able to do now if we jump back into settings there's a new option called phone and in this area you can now link your android or iphone device to your windows 10 pc and right now this is very sort of basic it's not really linking what you do is you download an app on your iphone or android device and when you're in chrome or whatever web browser you use on your phone you can 
uh, share that web page with an app that you download from Microsoft and that will send it directly to your computer and then automatically launch it in Edge. So this is a really odd use case. If you're somebody who uses an Android or an iPhone with Microsoft Edge on your PC, then this will be great for you. But most people who use Android and iOS devices generally use Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser they have on their phone on their PC and Edge isn't on iOS and Android. So it's a sort of useless feature, I guess. I don't know. I um, mean, maybe some people will like it, but in this case, it's not for me since I'm a Windows Phone user. And yes, this doesn't work with Windows Phone. Microsoft says, oh, Windows Phone's already connected to your PC via your Microsoft account, but you cannot send web pages directly to your PC. So, you know, Microsoft and their commitment to Windows 10 Mobile, still pretty rubbish. Now, if we go into settings here and go into updates and security, go to advanced, and go to delivery optimization and go to advanced again. You'll see that there's a whole bunch of advanced options in here now. I can change how much or how little the system uses bandwidth when downloading updates. So if you're somebody with slow internet and you find that when Windows isn't trying to download a new feature update, which is can sometimes be two gigabytes, three gigabytes in size, um, you'll notice that Windows update will, you know, take, will eat up a lot of your bandwidth. Now by default, Windows will no longer do that. It will take up way less of your bandwidth, which means if you're streaming a video or trying to play a game online, uh, you should still be able to do that whilst updates download in the background. As a result of this, they will download slower and you can change that as you can see here. I made it 100% so Windows Update will take up as much bandwidth as possible when downloading a, a new build or a new update so it gets the, down, uh, the update downloaded faster. But by default, I believe it's 45%. So it takes up only, you know, almost half of your bandwidth, which isn't so bad. Uh, you can also make it so it's only 5%. So if you want Windows Update to just take as little bandwidth as possible, you can do that. I prefer 100% because I like downloads, downloading as fast as possible. And then you can also change upload settings and all that good stuff. You can also see how much data Windows Updates is using every month. So if you're somebody who's bandwidth cautious, this is great for you. Uh, so yeah, that's a very nice change. Now moving right along, I haven't shown this before. I know I've talked about it, but in the My People stuff, you can send pops, they're called pops, to people who are pinned to your taskbar. And what that does is that pops up an emoji, an animated emoji on your desktop. So I haven't shown it off before. Microsoft have built this Windows Insider bot that sort of allows you to test it if you have no friends like me. So what I can do is ask the bot to send me an emoji. If I quickly close out, wait a second, you'll see that it pops up on the desktop and uh, that's what the pops look like, hopefully. There it is. My, the, the bot wants to fight me apparently. I think it will send a few. I think it might send three. There's another one, thumbs up, thanks. Um, inside a bot. I appreciate that. And strong. I think you're trying, what are you trying to tell me here? You want to fight? Um, so there you go. That's what they look like. And of course you can turn them off if we go into settings here and go into somewhere, personalize, taskbar. If we scroll down at the bottom, you'll see here that um, you can turn off pops. Oh, I lied. Oh, I Never mind, they've changed the name. They're no longer called Pops. They're just just notifications. So if I turn them off, that won't happen anymore. So it turns out they're actually not called Pops anymore. They were called Shoulder Taps, then they were renamed to Pops, and now they're just called My People Notifications. So I guess Microsoft are unable to settle on the names, so and now they're just called Notifications. So there you have it, guys. That's a quick look at Windows 10 Build 16.273, plus a bunch of older builds that I didn't do a build video on. Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.